I want to review some of the theory that we introduced on Friday, but I actually want to do it in a slightly more rigorous way because all I was trying to do was give you a feel for this idea, but now it's time to go, go full on, dive deep into the notation and define this in a, um, uh, a really concrete, definitive way. So, I want you to remember, we were playing around with this idea of limits with geometric progressions, which have a ratio, a common ratio, not a common difference, a common ratio that you multiply by over and over again. And what we noticed was, with a particular bunch of series, not all of them, I'll come to the not all of them in a second, but with a particular bunch of series, like say this one, when you take that common ratio and you multiply again and again and again and again and again, what you find is that that common ratio part, which has been raised to this power, it goes towards zero, yeah? Um, for example, here the common ratio being a half, when you multiply a half by itself repeatedly, you'll get um, a half a quarter, an eighth, a sixteenth, a thirty-second, and it gets tinier and tinier and tinier forever, right? So when you think about it going towards that limit, it really does become zero. But we said this doesn't always happen. There are plenty of counterexamples. I can think, for example, of the opposite, sort of like this. In this case, no such convergence happens, right? As you multiply by the common ratio, it just gets bigger and bigger forever, and nothing, nothing gets approached, if that makes sense, okay? So therefore, I want to put a hard algebraic condition on this, right? And you can say it in two different ways. You can choose whichever way you like, but um, I will tip my hat as to which I prefer in a second. So, the first way you can say is that what you want is for the ratio to be making the series smaller, not bigger. Does that make sense? Or I should say making the terms. If you want things to be smaller, not bigger, what you're saying is I want that common ratio to be less than one. So for example, a half is less than one, or three quarters is less than one. Anything like that will make smaller and more smaller and smaller. But you actually have to put another side on this inequality. Because for instance, if you have a look at a, a common uh, GP like this, I want you to think about that. What's the common ratio in this case? It's, it's negative 2. Now, negative 2 is less than 1, isn't it? But that's not going to have a limiting sum. Do you, do you see why? Think about what happens. I'm actually going to add on a few more terms here, etc. The idea is we were looking at the partial sums and we wanted them to approach something, yeah? What's the first partial sum going to be equal to? It's just 1, right? That's the first partial sum. What's the second partial sum? It's these two, so that'll be negative 1. And as you go and progress, the third partial sum, you add this to the next term, which is going to be 3, and then negative 5, and then, what am I up to? 11. These partial sums aren't going toward anything, okay? So we're not going to get a limiting sum. So this on its own is not enough. I actually have to say, you have to be above something as well. What do you have to be above? Be less than 1. I need to be above negative 1, right? You see, so that's negative 2, yeah? And it makes it bigger and bigger and bigger. But as long as you're between negative 1 and 1, you will get these terms getting smaller and smaller and smaller. That's what you're after, okay? A more succinct way of saying that, if you have a look being between negative 1 and 1, is to use our absolute value notation from earlier in the year. If the absolute value of r is less than 1, uh, th those two lines are saying the same thing. Those two inequalities are the same. So I kind of like this one because it's more succinct and it gets at the fact that what's important about this number r, what's important about the ratio is that it's small, its size is small. It actually doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative, so long as it's small enough you will get this happening over here. Okay. So on the basis of that, since that r to the n goes to zero, we define the limiting sum s as this, the limit as n approaches infinity of your partial sums, right? That's what s of n is. We have a formula for the partial sum. It's this fraction. Do you remember what it is? And do you remember which one would make most sense to use given the condition? I'll give you a clue. It starts with an A. OK, now we can put r to the n minus 1 here. Like that's a perfectly sound use of the partial sum formula. However, the particular kinds of common ratio that I've got, they're all going to be 
small ratios, small ratios. So on this denominator, if I had um, r minus one, I'm gonna have a negative down the bottom, okay? So I was trying to avoid that. So in fact, I'm gonna use the other form, which is one minus r to the n, which gives you one minus r on the bottom, okay? Now, see this bit here? See where it appears? See where it appears? Uh, oh, I keep forgetting that I've lost my other colors. Yeah, it's fine. This guy here, there it is, right? That's going to approach zero. So I can evaluate this limit like so. You might remember us doing this last time and stuff cancelled out, yeah? So all I end up with is this, this remarkably simple formula. That's the limiting sum, okay? So a common use of this is with recurring decimals. That was what we had a look at very briefly at the end. I just kind of gave it to you really quickly. So I want to show you how this is what 6L is about, how to recognize what's happening in a recurring decimal. Okay, so for example, or I might just put a little subheading for you, recurring decimals. If you think about a recurring decimal like this, 0 0.107, 107, 107, dot, 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 dot. Okay. This is the limiting sum. It's been defined for you. It's a number. But what we want to show is, wait, where does that actually come from in terms of all of this? Well, I can write this as a GP, and therefore I can use this limiting sum idea, right? I can separate it out into a bunch of terms. Have a look, have a look. There's the repeating part. So the first one's going to be 107 over what? This will be 1,000, right? 1,000, like so. So that's fine. Uh, the next one over is this guy here. Well, it's three zeros in addition, so therefore it's not going to be 107 over 1,000. It'll be 107 over... In this case, it'll be a million, but you can save yourself some mental effort here and also some writing of zeros. All it is, is a thousand times a thousand, right? Now, which actually makes it a lot easier for us to see that it's a GP. What's the next one going to be? 107 over thousand cubed. So in writing it like this, I'm already highlighting, there's a, there's the common ratio appearing, it's on the denominator, okay? So I can say, this equals, and I'm just going to launch straight into my limiting sum. I'm going to say 107 over 1,000. That's my A. So that goes on the numerator. And then I've got 1 minus, don't forget, you're actually making things smaller. So your common ratio is little, right? It's less than 1. So don't say it's 1,000. I know you can see the 1,000 is growing, but that's not the common ratio. It's 1 over 1,000. Okay. I think it's helpful not just helpful, I think it's mathematically sound, at this point to say, since I can only use the limiting sum formula, the limiting sum formula only has meaning when these conditions are met, right? Like you can actually put uh, this, this GP here, you can put it into this formula and you can get a number out. It just doesn't make sense because the limit business didn't actually happen for this particular common ratio. So I think we should actually justify the fact that we've used this formula. I'm gonna say since r equals one over a thousand, namely uh, the absolute value of r is less than one. So this is what allows you to use this super, super simple formula, because uh, otherwise it's invalid. All right, now we can just simplify out. So if I go uh, 107 on a thousand, what's the actual denominator now after I simplify out? Have a look. 999 over 1,000. And you'll know you've done this right because you've got that cancelling that's going to happen on the top and the bottom. Okay, so here's our answer. Now, just as a bit of an end note to this, uh, this is very easy to apply when it's like, oh, I can see the exact thing happening. But sometimes you get ones that are slightly different. So for example, just look up for a minute just so you don't miss me writing this. I could ask you to do this, but I could just as easily ask you to do this. Now, this is not, the whole thing is not a recurring decimal. Like, what's that four going to do? Well, it's not that difficult to work out because I still have a GP here, right? I still have a GP, so what will I do that's different? I can think of two things that I'll do that's different. Have a think. 
is the um, is the common ratio still going to be a thousand? Uh, one over a thousand, I should say. Is it still one over a thousand to go from term to term? Hmm. Well, it depends what you think the terms are, right? Let me ask another question. Is this guy here part of your GP? Well, it can't be, can it? Because whatever you multiply by to get to the next term, well, it won't be the same thing to get the next one, next one, next one. So what you've got is like a GP here plus some loner hanging out on the side. So you're going to deal with that as a separate fraction. That's OK. So let me just write this back as its original question. And you can help me start off and then finish how I would have it if there was a 0 0.4 out the front. 107, 107, dot, 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 dot. OK, think. What's 0 0.4 as a fraction? 4 over 10. That's that. So you've, whoops, it is you. you've dealt with him, no big deal. And then your GP begins. Now the first one won't be 107 over 1,000 anymore because I've made it 10 times smaller. Yeah. So this is going to be 10 times 1,000. You'll see in a second why I've separated these out rather than write just 10,000. What's the next one going to be? Have a look. Uh, there he is, right there. <coughs> yeah, very good. So the 10 is still there, but I'm making it 1,000 times smaller, just like I did before, except a little further. Okay? Um, and I need one more to establish the pattern. Okay, does that make sense? So now, this is 4 over 10 plus, and then here comes the GP. So you can go ahead and you can do this for the same reason. And off you go. Okay? Um, you will then get, uh, I'm guessing it'll be a 107 over, not 999, but everything is 10 times smaller. Yeah? So I guess it'll be 9990. 9, 9,990. There you go. Plus 4 over 10, and you can put those things together, and you just get a different fraction. Okay?